We're going to do a little uh, show here, about 45 minutes, called The History of the Ukulele and Song and Dance. And what we want to do is give you a little bit of background on where the ukulele came from, how it got a name, and why is it so popular today. Uh, you know, little known, but the ukulele is a relatively new instrument. It wasn't invented until the uh, 1870s. Um, it's a Hawaiian musical instrument. And uh, it was brought over from Portugal. So if you just kind of close your eyes and think about it, there's this poor guy, he's stuck on this boat, he's going to sugarcane fields to go ahead and get himself a job. And he's been on that boat for about 17 months. He finally lands in Hawaii. And he's just so happy that he's made it on that boat. And he's just so tired of hearing Pedro tell that same story about the burrow. He's just, you know, about to go nuts. He jumps off the boat, he just starts playing his ukulele really fast. Well, the Hawaiians saw his fingers, you know, going up and down the uh, fretboard, and so they, they thought it looked like his fingers were jumping like a flea. And so that's where the name ukulele came from, jumping flea. But he wasn't playing a ukulele. He was playing one of the cousins of the ukulele, or predecessors of the ukulele, called a brahinia, a rajo, or a cavaquinha. And those are all uh, Portuguese instruments that were brought over back in 17, or 18, 70s over to Hawaii. It's kind of interesting, uh, in Hawaii, and a lot of people don't know this, but it's a big cattle producing state. And so back in the 1830s, there were a lot of Mexican cowboys over in Hawaii, they brought the guitar. So the guitar had already established itself in the 1830s. And the reason I bring this up is because the tuning of a ukulele isn't, doesn't, isn't derived from any of those predecessors. It's like a combination. It's the size of a cavaquinha, it's tuned like a brahinia, and it's uh, overall the tuning of it's like a guitar. So it's a, a rather unique instrument, and it's a rather new instrument. Testing. Testing. I can't believe that thing snapped. <laughs> test, test. At least that still works. Hey, that's some excitement there. Wow. He had enough special effects like that now. I think it's a heck of a new sacrifice. Yeah, I know. All right, so back in 1880. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Back, <laughs> back in 1880. Well, the ukulele really caught on over in Hawaii. In fact, uh, it, it caught on to the point where they started making those in the 1880s. And, and they were the Portuguese cabinet makers that decided to kind of cash in on this, and they started making ukuleles. It became so popular that even the king uh, of Hawaii began playing the ukulele. But I want a lot of, you know, this is a little bit different. We usually do this show to people who don't know what a ukulele is. A lot of people do. But what makes a ukulele sound the way it does? And I'll show you that. Ukulele is tuned like a guitar on, on the fifth fret. Grab that uh, baritone for me, sure. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And this, this, this ukulele over here is actually tuned just like a guitar, just without two of the strings. So go ahead and fret it on the fifth fret. Get up on it. <laughs> fret on the seventh fret for tuned just like guitar. This one's tuned like a guitar in the seventh fret. This one over here is tuned like a guitar in the fifth fret. Good fret on the fifth fret. The big difference being is that it has a octave higher string at the top of the fretboard. Go hit the fret at the fifth and hit the fat string, Cheryl. See the difference? 
tuned what they call re-entrant tuning. So it starts high, and then it's tuned just like a guitar. And that's what kind of gives the ukulele its bouncy sound. So if you hear that bounce, I'm going to just play a little part of one song here. It's called Ain't She Sweet. Hear that bounce? So if you played that on a, on a guitar that was tuned normally, it wouldn't have that bounce to it. So that's what kind of makes the ukulele unique, is that it's called re-entrant tuning, because you re-enter the tonal scale. Okay, the next, uh, what had happened over, by, by 1900, the ukulele had become, it was taken over over in um, Hawaii. Everybody was playing it. And that kind of translated as Hawaii was discovered on the mainland. And I don't know if you all can think back of some of the old music you heard, but the uh, Hawaiian music became very popular around 1910, 1915. And what really propelled it to uh, Hawaii to its level of popularity is because people were able to travel a little bit more. And also, uh, there was a big exposition that was held. The Hawaiian and, and this exposition was held in Chicago, and the big hit of that exposition was the Hawaiian exposition. And interestingly enough, the number one song at that particular exposition became and became the number one billboard song was called On the Beach at Waikiki. So we want to play you that song here, On the Beach at Waikiki. Uh, so it's a number one hit, and this is really the first big Hawaiian song that came over to uh, the mainland and became popular and popular, popularized Hawaiian music. I didn't think it was going to be this windy thing. It was supposed to be like two mile an hour wind, so I didn't bring in any clips or anything. You ready? One, two, three, four. actually a Hawaiian instrument. Is that right? 
Yeah. We, uh, kind of interesting story. We, uh, we were playing over at the gardens at a, um, a art show, and uh, we had this woman came up to us and said, hey, you need a bass player. And I said, sure. I figured she'd go. She was about 75 years old. I thought she would go get her, like, son or, you know, grandson or something. So she brings this bass bucket over and starts playing. Well, then Lynn heard it. She was working at the art show. She came over and ended up buying one, and we ended up playing together. So it's kind of an interesting instrument. And what, kind of, the kind of downside to it for me is when we started playing ukuleles, this is my wife Cheryl and I, that was kind of the novel instrument. Now nobody pays attention to the ukulele. Yeah, I'll go right to the bass bucket, you know. So, yeah. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so pe pe well, people always ask. Pe well, people always ask, does it play all the notes? And it does. It plays every one of them. So. <laughs> all right, the next song we're going to do is called My Hoppa Halley Hula Girl, Haoli Hula Girl. And this song um, it's also known as Honolulu Hula Girl. And it was, uh, we're going to have Kathy and Denise are going to dance to it. And it's a song about a uh, Haoli means half. And then uh, Hapa means white. I got it backwards there. Holly's white. I'm sorry. Hapa's half. <laughs> I still got hit in the head by the thing. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and play that song for you. Hapa, Holly, Hula Girl. everybody here as we get, go on. The next song here, uh, Woody and Kathy are going to go ahead and do It's called Kanaka Bye Bye, but that's Woody over here. Now go ahead, Woody. I'm, I, we got time. And this is Lynn, our, our bucket player, bass bucket player, panini player. This is my wife, Cheryl. And Woody and Kathy are married. And I don't know if anybody checked out Denise's booth over there, but she's at the second booth. She runs east of Maui. So, um, uh, Kanaka Vai Vai. It's written in 1915 by Johnny Almeida. And it's based on the Bible parable, which it says, it's easier for a camel to go through the needle's eye than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And expresses how the path to heaven 
is through love and compassion. It remains a very favorite Hawaiian song that's performed at a lot of different ceremonies. And Woody, you might want to expand on that a little bit. But let's hear it for Woody and Kathy. Kanaka, bye bye. Yeah. It's a very popular song that's performed. Many of you have probably not heard this before, but it's Jesus Meke Kanaka Vai Vai or Kanaka Vai Vai. Yeah? And we're going to, um, my wife's going to sing this in Hawaiian as well. <laughs> yeah, as soon as I catch my breath. Kahi Lua Kolo Pa. Let me walk through paradise with you, Lord. Take my hand and lead me there. All my earthly treasures I would gladly give. Teach me how to love and how to share. Greed and lust and vanity were mine, Lord. Till I found your love divine Down on my knees I pray I find a way Let me walk through paradise with you Oh my Lord, my Savior Guide these poor feet along this lonely road Faith, hope, and love will help me find your footsteps. Let me walk through paradise with you. Maka ale hele ole su i hala vai aku ai. Me ke kanaka o pi o hano hano. Kaulana i ka vai vai Pani mai i ka o pi o E ku u haku mai ka i He ha o o o ka u hana aku ai I loa e ke o la mau E ha ave e ha ave li lo I ko mau vai vai Hu li ahai mai i ho I lo wa e ke o la mau O my Lord, my Savior Guide these poor feet along this lonely road Faith, hope, and love will help me find your footsteps. Let me walk through paradise with you. Let me walk through paradise with you. Mahalo Nui. We're giving directions up here. <laughs> Lynn's your direction person. All right, uh, while this was going on, a lot of people were looking at the Hawaiian music, listening to it, and enjoying it. The ukulele also became a very popular instrument for the Tin Pan Alley artists. And that's probably, the, the, for me, that's the most favorite type of music to play on the ukulele. A lot of people don't think it's traditional, but I, I really love it. And uh, the next uh, one we're going to do is a little medley called uh, She's a Grand Old Flag. and. Uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy, and this was both written by George M. Cohn, and it's kind of interesting, uh, the, the song uh, Your Grand Old Flag was actually named Your Grand Old Rag originally, and George was sitting in a, uh, back in 1910, he was sitting in a uh, Fourth of July parade next to a Civil War veteran that had been in Gettysburg, and he had this flag that he'd carried in the battlefield, and he pulled it out and he showed it to George, you know, and he says, man, she's just a grand old rag, isn't she? So it clicked in his head, he goes and writes this song, Grand old rag, people are booing it because they hate the name of it, right? You now they're calling our flag a rag, so he changed it to Grand Old Flag, which I thought was kind of interesting. And of course, everybody knows Yankee Doodle Dandy, so we're going to do a little medley of those two. Oh, 
forgotten, keep your eye on that grand old flag.